Hey everybody, Plato and Guy here, and today I'm bringing you my review of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Star Wars is easily one of the biggest entertainment franchises in the world, and since Disney acquired the series, a constant release of films and memorabilia has constantly been chucked out. It's certainly been hard to escape from a galaxy far, far away. And video games set in the famed sci-fi series used to be to a penny in the noughties. But releases have been few and far between, especially since EA took over publishing rights of the video game side of things. And by two Battlefront games that both didn't deliver and disappointed many gamers, there hasn't been much yet. That being said, Battlefront 2 has finally redeemed itself after two years after launch. But it's the list of cancelled projects that hurt the most, especially Star Wars 1313, as there hasn't been a decent Star Wars game for single players in absolute years. But finally now, after all this time, we've got one. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is finally here and under the capable hands of Respawn Entertainment, we finally have the Star Wars game we truly deserve. Set some time after the Jedi Purge that was Order 66 in Revenge of the Sith, Fallen Order follows a young Jedi called Cal Kestis, who has come out of hiding to try and bring back the Jedi Order by trying to find a holocron list full of Force-sensitive children. It's a snappy tale that doesn't take too long to get started and it rarely ever stops, and it really does have fun with the Star Wars license by including plenty of references to the series, whilst also being easy to follow for series newcomers. Leading character Cal kind of feels a bit bland in my opinion, he is a fine character but he really should have been something more, but it's mainly due to the other cast members being incredibly likeable and well written, from BD-1 the adorable little droid that joins you on your quest, to the rest of the Mantis crew, Grease and Cerez who are both really likeable and do get fleshed out as the game goes along. The game's main enemy, the second sister, is incredibly sinister too as a foe and also has quite a lot of layers to her character and why she is with the Empire is very interesting. Overall the plot of Fallen Order is a lot of fun with many great characters, though Cal could have done with a little bit more fleshing out. As for the gameplay now, and this is where Fallen Order really does shine, taking inspiration from many of the best games in the business like Uncharted, Dark Souls and Metroid Prime to make for an incredibly enjoyable experience. You and the Mantis crew travel around a handful of planets, exploring the rather huge areas, and like the best Metroidvania titles, you start off exploring and only allowed access to a few little areas, but more of the map will open up when you find shortcuts and come back with new abilities. Each planet you visit essentially doubles in size when you return for them on the second visit, add in loads of hidden areas that will be missed if you just focus on the main objective, and there's a heck of a lot here to explore. Each of the game's planets house plenty of different secrets like force echoes, chests that have loads of free cosmetics which is literally unheard of in an EA game, to plant seeds, logs about the history of the areas, to stim canisters to help boost your health. There's a great deal to look out for and going back to these planets once you've unlocked all the force powers is incredibly rewarding and exciting to do so. Another part why exploration is so enjoyable to do so is how great it is to control Cal, as he does feel very similar to Nathan Drake. As Cal is very agile, he can climb up vines, jump from high areas, swim underwater, swing from vines, and Cal can even wall run a la Titanfall, and again, it feels very easy to pull off these moves, and within minutes it feels very natural to play. Jedis are most famous for their lightsabers and force moves, and the combat in Fallen Order is superb. Taking inspiration from the incredibly popular Dark Souls series, yeah, it's very similar, but damn, combat is incredibly fun. Taking away the stamina meter, you're free to smack your lightsaber till your heart's content, but randomly hitting enemies will only get you so far, as you have to pay attention to your enemy movements and know when to strike. Normal stormtroopers won't require too much effort, but baton troopers will need to be blocked at the right time to daze them, but later enemies like the purge troopers will certainly test your skills. Borrowing from Sekiru, each enemy has a block meter, so if they block, you won't be able to do any damage to them. There's also dodges and unblockable attacks to keep you on your toes in many different combat encounters. 
Another addition to the combat that works really well is the force powers from the push which will send enemies flying to the pull that drags an enemy to you so you can either fling them back or deliver a devastating final blow. It's great. There's many more powers you can choose from but I won't spoil them but you have to be careful not to overdo the force powers as there's a force bar that will quickly deplete if you rely on the force powers too much. Every time you defeat an enemy you gain some XP and once you fill up that bar you gain a skill point. You can use these skill points to buy new skills from this game's version of Dark Souls bonfires which are called here meditation points. Here you can spend points, heal up and replenish your stims. But like Dark Souls when you heal up all the enemies respawn so you have to be careful. Yes it's very much on the nose but it works well so I don't really mind. Going through the game's many planets, you come across a whole host of different threats. Yes, there's a lot of normal stormtroopers and empire lackeys to defeat, but there's a heck of a lot of native wildlife like big spiders, rats, flying beasts, and a few other enemies I won't spoil. It's nice to see Respawn expand on the wildlife you find in the Star Wars universe with some wonderfully designed monsters and some gloriously epic boss fights. One thing it does with its combat that the Souls games haven't is different levels of difficulty. There's four levels and interestingly enough the game actually tells you what changes happen with each difficulty level. From enemy health to your damage to the time you have to block. It's incredibly refreshing to see that. I played on the third difficulty and it did offer a decent challenge. And with the recent discussion of having easier difficulty modes in the Souls games, this game actually makes a good argument for it. Lengthwise, the game is much longer than The Force Unleashed 1 and 2. Completing just the main story will take you around the 15 to 20 hour mark if you just focus on the main path. But with so many branching paths, it's highly likely this will take you around 25 plus hours to see the game's ending credits. For those who want to take up the challenge to complete the game 100%, then you're talking a good 35 to 40 hours plus. On to the presentation now, and Fallen Order is an incredible looking title with some outstanding looking environments with plenty of detail and teeming with life. Character models also look very good, though the Wookiees could do with a little bit of work. And instead of being forced to use the in-house Frostbite engine, Respawn has built the game with Unreal Engine and it's easily one of the standout titles for that engine. But it isn't without its faults, as the game is prone to glitching out with enemies doing T-poses, to buttons not working and frame rate issues. I noticed even on PS4 Pro there was issues with the game pausing to load in the next area, whilst it's not as frequent as the base PS4, it's still rather annoying. Conclusion time now and Fallen Order had a lot riding on it and thankfully Respawn has delivered an incredibly enjoyable romp through the Star Wars universe. Its gameplay borrows a lot from many different genres but it works oh so well. Mixing Uncharted, Metroidvania and Dark Souls into one brilliant formula, it's a fantastic gameplay loop that does justice to the Star Wars fans. The story is serviceable and has plenty of references, but it's the various technical issues that do let the game down, with constant pausing for loading and a fair share of glitches. It's not a deal breaker as this is arguably the best Star Wars game since 2008's Force Unleashed, and easily one of the best EA games of the generation. So that's why I'm given Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order an 8.5 out of 10 with the title of Great. Thank you for watching my review, like, rate and subscribe, and until next time, happy gaming. Bye.